want to welcome everybody to this, the fifth Sunday of Lent, and our continued series on the Lord's Prayer. Today we'll be focusing on lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And you'll need a piece of paper of some sort and a pen, pencil, crayon, marker, whatever, uh, for later in the service. So gather your supplies as we prepare to worship. As always during Zoom worship, we ask everybody please remain muted. Uh, we would love to see your smiling face, but video is optional. Remember that this is recorded and posted on YouTube and at the church's website. Use the chat room freely during the worship service and yes, even during the sermon. And please extend grace because this will not be perfect. Let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship our living, loving Lord as we listen to the prelude. Beautiful. Thank you, Beverly. I invite you to join Suzanne for our call to worship. I will be the one and we'll, we'll all be the many. We come to worship the God. Let me. Well, David, I'm missing the right side of the screen, but I think I'll get it. Sorry, we come to worship the God that walks with us through every challenge. We come to, we come remember, to remember what, what Jesus, Jesus did when he faced temptation in the, wilderness. in the wilderness. When Israel wandered through the wilderness, she was not alone. God was there. When, when we walk through the, through the wilderness, we, we are not alone. alone. God, God is us. with us. We come, we come to, worship to worship our God, our God who, who gives us strength, strength for every journey and courage for every, every test. test. Thank you, Suzanne. Invite you to join Jeff and Laura for our first hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. The words will be on your screen. Scorn thy Christ, God save his way. 
Please join me. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Please join me in our prayer of confession. I will be the one again, as you all will be the many. Lord Jesus, you were tempted like us, but did not submit. You also promised to help those who are put to the test. We aren't exempt from the subtle attraction of what is wrong and what is evil. So we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. Christ, Christ, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. Lord Jesus, forgive us for exploitations in, uh, in our abilities for personal gain and for exercising our God-given gifts for self-centered reasons. Lord, Lord have, mercy have mercy upon us. Upon us. Christ, Christ, have, have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord Jesus, forgive us for making a show of our religion and for using our faithful to attract attention to ourselves instead of pointing to God. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon, us. upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Lord Jesus, you have shown us a better way in the wilderness, at the temple, and on the mountaintop. So, so we, we turn, turn from, from seeking, seeking selfish, selfish comforts. comforts. We, we turn, turn from our inclination, from our inclination to, to false piety. piety. We, we turn, turn from our from preference for petty loyalties. loyalties. We turn, we turn our faces, our faces to, God to God and seek and God's seek grace, grace and, strength and strength for the trials, for the trials and temptations, and temptations ahead. ahead. Amen. Um. <clears throat> From Psalms 85, you, Lord, showed us favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the inequity of your people 
and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, God our Savior, and put away your displeasure with us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Suzanne. Well, I want to continue our time together, Shiloh, of learning the Lord's Prayer and some motions to it. So let's review what we've learned first, okay? All right, so we start here. Remember, our Father who art in heaven, and we extend our arms out. Yeah. And then we put our hands to our chest and bow our heads and say, Hallowed be thy name. And then we say, Thy kingdom come, and we put our hand out to the left, Thy will be done. And we put our hand, other hand out to the right. So we're doing this motion with either hand, right? You got it. Thy will be done. And then we make a circle with our hands, kind of like the world on earth. On earth, that's right. And then extend your hands out again as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. And then we put a, we make like a bowl with our hands and we put it to our mouth and we say, give us our daily bread. And then we put our hand in front of our eyes like this and say, forgive us our debts. Forgive us our debts. Then forgive us our debts. You got it. And then if you have somebody by you, or just imagine somebody by you, if you're home like me alone, put your hand near their face, whether they're real or imaginary, and we say, forgive our debtors. And so we, we put a hand out by their face. Okay, so we do, forgive us our debts, and then we put a hand out by somebody's face, real or imagined, forgive us our debtors, all right? And then today, today is lead us not into temptation. And what I want you to do is I want you to make fists with your hands, okay? Like you're being strong. And I want you to put them across your chest like this, like you're protecting yourself, okay? Lead us not into temptation. All right, you got that one? Lead us not into temptation. And then I want you to, you got it. I want you to open your hands and extend them out and down by your side and just kind of stand up straight, but deliver us from evil so that we feel like we're protected and then we're opening ourselves up to God delivering us and helping us and supporting us. So that's all the motions. You're all caught up. Let's go through them together. Okay? And then we'll use them during the Lord's Prayer later in the service. So we start with our Father. Our Father. Who art in heaven. Art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. Again, extend your hands out. As, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us, give us this day our daily right. bread. And forgive us our debts. 
as we forgive our debtors and lead us not, that's right, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us um, from evil. You got it, girl. Good job. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll use that later when we pray the Lord's Prayer together during prayers of the people, okay? Okay. All right, it's good to see you. Well, let me go back to screen sharing. So today we're going to do our scripture reading a little differently. It's going to be interactive. So I'm going to stop screen sharing again uh, and, uh, and let Suzanne explain the interactive part. Okay. <clears throat> Today's reading from God's word is the story of Jesus facing temptations in the wilderness. We're going to experience Matthew 4, 1 through 11 in an interactive way. I'm going to teach you responses to be used during the story. When you hear particular words, please use the appropriate response. And here are the words and the response, <clears throat> the responses. First, hold up one finger and shout one. Let me. One. One. Everybody got one. Second, hold up two fingers and shout two. Two. Third, hold up three fingers and shout three. Three. Fourth, hold up four fingers and shout four. Four. Next one, rocks. Make a fist as if it were a rock and beat it on your other palm. So you're gonna beat your fist on your palm. Next, wild animals. You can make any wild animal sound you wish at this time. So I'm gonna go, woo, woo, woo but make a wild animal sound. <laughs> we could do that one. <laughs> now, words. Blow gently onto an open hand and press that hand against your heart. Okay. All right. So listen and let us listen to what the spirit is saying to the church. Before Jesus began his work, he went through a series of challenges. First, one, he went out into the wilderness where he had to survive all on his own with no one else around. Second, two, two. he had no food. He was out there for 40 years days. So he felt very weak and hungry by the end of that time. Third, three. three, there were wild animals out there and he had to trust God to keep him safe. Fourth, he had to face Four. three difficult tests. The first, number one, was this. Jesus was tempted to turn the rocks around him into lovely, soft, fresh bread. <clears throat> As he was very hungry, this was a very difficult test. He could easily have done it with all the power that he had. He could have turned the rocks of all kinds into delicious food. But he didn't. Instead, he remembered these words.
It takes more than bread to stay alive. We need to have God's life-giving words. The second test, number two, was this. Jesus found himself on the top of the temple in the city and was tempted to make a spectacular jump. So God would send some angels to catch him, and he wouldn't stub his toe on the rocks below. People in the city would see it and know he was the son of God. Then Jesus remembered these words. Whatever you do, don't test God, but trust God always. The third test happened like this. Jesus walked upon the rocks, overlooking <clears throat> miles and miles of beautiful cities. And a voice said to him, you can have all this. You can be in charge of all. All you have to do is worship me instead of God. Jesus could have all the power in the world over the cities and the people in them. They would have been under his control. It was very tempting, but instead Jesus said, Worship God, the Lord of heaven and earth. God is the only one we should ever worship. Jesus knew that he had already had all the power in the world. He didn't have to prove it by leaping off those rocks. After this, God sent angels to look after him and keep him safe from the wild animals. <sighs> Join me in our response. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Suzanne. Today, we're going to talk about the final petition, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I've always loved this image that Brighton Revere painted back in the 1800s of Jesus out in the wilderness during his time of testing. Let me stop screen sharing and invite you to join me for a word of prayer. Gracious God, we experience this word from Matthew's gospel and wonder about its meaning in our lives today. We know like Jesus, we face temptations to put self at the center and push you to the side. Help us to be like him, to remain faithful and true. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart May it all be acceptable to you, O God, who is our strength and our Savior. Amen. The novel Barabbas tells the fictitious story of the insurrectionist and murderer released by Pilate during Jesus' trial. Years after Jesus' death, Barabbas becomes a Roman slave. He's transported to Cyprus to work in the copper mines. There he meets an old Armenian slave named Sahak, who is a devout follower of the Messiah. Each slave wears a metal disc proclaiming that he belongs to Caesar. But Sahak has strange markings on the back of his disc, which spell out the name Christ Jesus. He may belong to Caesar, but his real allegiance is to Christ. Barabbas says he wishes to follow the Galilean too and asks his disc be inscribed with the name of Jesus. The two slaves work secretly down in the copper mine and scratch on the backside of Barabbas' disc the same markings as on Sahak's. Another slave finds out and sees them and reports them to the supervisor. Word finally reaches the governor of the island, and the two slaves are brought before him. 
He questions them about the markings. Sahat says they are the name of his God. The governor reminds him that God, Caesar is God and having other gods before Caesar is punishable by death. Then the governor questions Barabbas. Does he believe in this God whose name is inscribed on his discs? Barabbas shakes his head no. You don't, ask the governor. Why do you bear his name on your disc then? Barabbas says nothing. Is he not your God, asks the governor. Isn't this what the inscription means? After a period of silence, Barabbas finally says, I have no God. Sahak looks at him with such despair, pain, and amazement that it passes right through Barabbas into his inner self, even though he keeps his eyes averted. Once more, Sahak is questioned. Does he realize the consequences of wearing the name of his God? Yes, he does. The governor says, if you renounce your faith, no harm shall come to you. Will you do it? I cannot, says Sahak. The governor orders him to be taken away and crucified. As he is led away, the governor comments, extraordinary man. Then he takes a knife and holding Barabbas' disc in one hand, crosses out the name of Jesus. There's really no need, he says, as you don't believe in him. The governor commends Barabbas for being a sensible fellow and orders he be given a better job. For the rest of his life, Barabbas wears the crossed out name of Jesus. Friends, that's what the fifth petition of this prayer is about. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This petition is not so much about the minor temptations we face, the seductive voices of flesh and soul that hinder our discipleship, no, it's about the dreadful possibility that we too end up wearing the crossed out name of Jesus. The Greek word used in this prayer for temptation is parasmos. It also means trial or test. This petition is about our test of allegiance to Christ. It's about the trial of our faithfulness to God. It's about the possibility of us turning our backs on God's kingdom. Having set our hand to the plow, we walk away and leave the furrow unfinished. Jesus experienced parasmos. After his baptism in the Jordan River, he was led into the wilderness and tested for 40 days. During that time of trial, Satan, a representative of evil, appeal to Jesus' humanity. He tempted him to turn aside from his devotion to the Father and commitment to God's kingdom. First, there was an appeal to basic appetites. Jesus was tempted to tone, turn stones into bread. Then there was an appeal to religious pride and confidence. Jesus was tempted to throw himself off of the highest part of the temple and be borne up by the angels. Finally, there was an appeal to the desire for power and authority. Jesus was tempted to fall down and worship the evil one in exchange for an earthly kingdom. All three temptations have one thing in common. They let self instead of God stand at the center of life. And isn't that when we always get into trouble? When we let self become the center of everything? Jesus overcame Parasmos because he kept God firmly at the center. And that's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, he told his disciples, 
Pray that you may not enter into temptation. Jesus knew if they prayed, if they kept God at the center, they would withstand the test. Otherwise, they were bound to fail. And yet fail they did. For Judas was the first to, to succumb to temptation. Of all the disciples, he was the most practical and self-sufficient. He was the keeper of their treasury. And when he came into Parasmos, he became concerned about saving himself. If Jesus was the captain of a sinking ship, he wanted a life preserver. So he made a deal with the chief priest and sold his Lord for the price of a slave. He put self at the center of the circle and left God out. Afterwards, when he realized what he had done, he was so remorseful, he committed suicide. But Judas wasn't alone in his failure. As Jesus stood before the Sanhedrin, Simon Peter put self at the center and flatly denied his association with Christ. Yes, before the cock crowed, he denied Jesus three times. One by one, each of his disciples abandoned their Lord in his time of greatest need. They all fled in the face of Parasmus. Even the early Christians faced their own form of temptation when they were persecuted and killed because of their faith. But for us Jesus followers today, it comes more unexpectedly and quietly. We drift along like people asleep in a boat and wake up to find that we've left our faith behind. In a world where we're not in prison for our beliefs, where Bibles are available for the taking in every motel room, we forget the importance of God in our daily lives and Christ becomes a stranger to us. The absence of pressure leads to our forgetting, to our not taking it seriously, to our falling away. I've heard the same story from men and women over my 37 years as a pastor. I can't explain what happened, they said, to my faith. I went to church with my family when I was growing up, but then I went off to college or into the military or to work and got out of the habit. I've been to church a few times, usually Christmas or Easter, but I haven't gotten involved with the congregation, nor do I read the Bible or pray regularly. I sort of let it slide. I guess it's not unusual. It's not unusual, is it? to sort of let it slide, the crossed out name of Jesus. Or as the governor said, there's not much point in crossing it out. We don't really believe, not enough to remain faithful. We get busy. We neglect prayer and scripture. We neglect gathering for worship and serving our neighbors in need. We neglect staying close to our Father because there's always things to do, unfinished projects and last minute tasks, Zoom family gatherings to attend. In the Hamas, there's hiking, fishing, hunting, or other outdoor activities. And in March, there are ball games to watch during the madness and shows on Netflix to binge. Life goes on, and before we know it, we've lost all contact with Christ. We didn't plan it that way. It just happened. Beloved, most of the time you and I face casual temptation as opposed to formal temptation. Nothing big, really, just not making an effort. Not remembering that Jesus said we had to pray to avoid it to be delivered from evil. It's Parasmos we didn't expect, Parasmos that caught us unaware, Parasmos that ended up with us being stuck in evil 
like the fox and the tar baby, and we can't get away from it. The author James Dickey understood. He wrote a book called Deliverance that was made into a popular movie. His novel portrays what I've been talking about. On the surface, it's the story of four city men who make a canoe trip down a wild whitewater river in northern Georgia. On the way, they're ambushed, but end up making a hair-raising escape. And the rest of the story is about their haphazard trip down the canyon, where locals are stalking and shooting at them from above. When they finally reach safety, they can't talk about the ordeal. They are delivered, but just barely, with their minds scarred for life. Dickie's story is a metaphor of our life of faith. It's like passing down a wild primitive canyon where we're easy marks for evil along the way. Evil is ready to spring out and devour us. It erupts when we least expect it. A young man wrecks his truck and is paralyzed for life. A 15 year old daughter gets pregnant. A spouse betrays us and leaves us for someone else. We lose our zest for life and fall into depression. We find out we have cancer. A global pandemic upends life as we know it. And if we have no faith, if we drifted away from God and no longer pray, who will deliver us? Who will help us through the canyon of life and faith? Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but deliver us from evil. Friends, this isn't an anticlimactic petition. Jesus doesn't put all the good stuff at the beginning of this prayer and leave the minor stuff at its end. This petition is more important than all the rest. Jesus says when you pray, Acknowledge God is our Father and pray for God's kingdom to come and will be done. And then pray for daily rations and for forgiveness for yourself and others. And then pray to hold on to your faith and never lose it. Yes, pray to hold on to your faith and never lose it. Amen. Let me go back to screen sharing. Let's join together and sing our next hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. The words will be on your screen. Okay. 
arms he'll take and she'll be God will find us all asleep. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Laura. I invite you now to take it to the Lord in prayer. As we just sang, Jesus knows our trials and temptations, our weaknesses, and is there to help us and support us. I invite you to take your piece of paper and your pen or pencil or crayon or marker, whatever you have, use words or images to express that trial or test or temptation that hinders you, that keeps God from being at the center of your life. Write it down and then pray and ask God to deliver you from it now and in the days to come. Let's reflect on giving back to God and asking God for the strength and courage we need to face whatever trial and temptation or test comes our way. And all God's people said together, amen. I want to thank everybody for their continued offerings of financial support to the church. Your constant and regular giving makes our ministry and our mission possible. So I want to express appreciation and gratitude for your giving week in and week out, month in and month out. Let us offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the financial gifts that have been sent to the church. Gracious God, we do offer ourselves to you. We give over our trials and or temptations or tests and pray to be delivered, to be strengthened, to have courage what may come our way in life and remain faithful to you remain with you at the center of our life and faith. We are grateful for all the gifts that have been sent to the church in whatever means possible and pray that you'll bless and multiply those gifts and continue to use them to support our church's ministry and mission in this valley and in this world. We pray all this in Christ's name and we say together, amen. I invite you to join Suzanne for our statement of faith. Statement of faith. What is meant 
by the final petition, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. We ask God to protect us from our own worst impulses, from all external powers of destruction in the world. We ask that we might not yield to despair in the face of seemingly hopeless circumstances. We pray for the grace to remember and believe, despite our unbelief, that no matter how bleak the world may sometimes seem, there is nonetheless a depth of love which is deeper than our despair. And that this love, which delivered Israel from slavery in Egypt and raised our Lord Jesus from the dead, will finally swallow up forever all that would now seem to defeat it. Amen. Thank you, Suzanne. I invite you to join with Jeff and Laura and sing our Lord's Prayer refrain. The words will be on your screen. Our Father, which art in heaven, prayers do you have today? Coming to you, Deb. Go ahead and unmute. Go ahead. Uh, so I've got both vaccines. Uh, I'm going to get my second one this week, and I hope all uh, a lot of people are starting to get that <laughs> so we can be safer. So that's praise God that those are available and that more and more people are getting them, even if they have to wait in line six hours to get them, it's probably well worth it in the end. So, all right. And my mom got both of them too. So, praise the hey. Lord get to see my mom. <laughs> praise God. 95 in a few couple months. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. When you had your hand up, go ahead, unmute. Yeah, my uh, usual thing for snow, I guess it's coming this week, so may it come. We need it. Amen. Pray for snow, rain, or whatever form moisture will take. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Suzanne, go ahead. Um, two things. For my daughter and her family, as they are preparing to leave Seattle to move to Los Alamos. Oh, wow. I didn't. Okay. And then I found out I have a vitreous detachment of my right eye. Ooh. So I pray for healing for it, please. Okay, we will. Let us pray together. Lord, 
hear our prayers. Susanna, go ahead. Sorry. Um, I'd like to ask prayers for my dear friend and mentor, Sally Alice Thompson, who fell yesterday morning and cracked a disc. She's uh, in a hospital in Albuquerque right now, UNM. Yeah. Um, she's 98. And oh, wow. uh, they just had a, they declared uh, March 8th is Sally Alice Thompson Day in Albuquerque. Oh, wow. It was also Inter International Women's Day, but, and I mean, she's an amazing woman and uh, I just pray for healing for her. Okay. And also for uh, my friend Pana, she left a phone message this morning asking if we could say some prayers for her. Okay. Well, we'll pray for Sally and Pana. Let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Other prayers. Go ahead, Diane. Unmute. Prayers for me. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, cousin Wayne, my aunt Mildred, for John Kennedy, for Jesse Icky, um, for all those in the valley who have got trauma going right now. Okay. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Well, I want to offer up continued prayers of healing for my son, Aaron. He, uh, he went to the physical therapist this week for the first time and has exercises to do at home. And so he's uh, continuing that healing process and is planning on going back to work this week at the co-op. So continued healing prayers for Aaron. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Coming back to you, Losey. A friend up there, uh, Pat and Tina Mahoney, I think but that's Beverly's neighbor. Tina is going to have a specialized hip surgery of some sort in Phoenix. Phoenix, I think, and they're leaving in a few days. Okay. So prayers for Tina's surgery goes well and that they're back home safely in a few weeks. All right. Prayers for Tina and the upcoming surgery. Let us pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Shannon, you go ahead. Unmute. I got go some uh, medical stuff going on the next two weeks, and uh, I, I I take a few prayers about that. So okay, we'll we'll give you two. <laughs> okay. go. No, healing prayers for Shannon. Let's pray together. Lord, hear our prayers. Anyone else? All right, let's go back to screen sharing. And I invite you to join with me to say our Lord's Prayer and to do the motions that go with it. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Invite you to sing along with Jeff and Laura on our last hymn, When We Are Tested, New Words to an Old Familiar Tune. When we are tested
sustains us by night and by day. When in the desert we cry for relief, pleading for paths marked by certain belief, lift us to love you beyond sign in test, trusting Beaches and thank you, Beverly. I invite you to watch and listen for our benediction. invite you to prepare your hearts and minds to serve our living, loving Lord 
out in the world as we listen to the post loop. Announcements are Lenten Bible study continues. We have it for two more weeks. If you'd like to join us on Wednesdays at 5:30, just let me know. We're continuing our study on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew. We're looking to have Zoom worship during Holy Week on Friday at 5:30 p.m. We'll also be uh, sharing the Lord's Supper at that service, so please make plans to be with us that evening. And don't forget, it's our 140th anniversary this year. We have a team that's planning and working on that celebration. And if you'd like to participate, let me or Diane Lewis know, and we'll put you to work. Let me stop screen sharing and... <laughs>